So I thought I was going to ease back into it slowly, but the America's Cup's got other ideas. There's been three brand new foils launched this week, the last of which has an idea which I certainly didn't think we'd see in the America's Cup. And on top of that, there's also two foils which I haven't even mentioned yet in any detail, which we need to cover. This video is going to be the big foil recap. Now we're seeing kind of second, third iterations of these test foils. We're seeing the direction the design teams are traveling with and getting indication of where they'll end up for the actual cup. Let's start off with the most vanilla of the new foils for this cup. Obviously, Alingi, Patriot for American Magic and Tiwuhutai are all sailing on old generation foils, so I'm not going to include them. But in terms of a, a new foil for the cup, this AC40 one design foil from Emirates Team New Zealand is pretty vanilla, a single flap running across the whole foil. Similar sort of design philosophy to what they had at the end of the last cup. More of a T-shape. I think the last foils they had had a little bit of pre-bending. Uh, no foil tip, so pretty sleek but pretty simple as well. Emirates Team New Zealand following this with the banana foil. I did a whole video on that, but it's quite an extreme radius and we'll see if you in further on in the video there's been a few teams which have moved in this direction but I still don't believe anyone is quite here in terms of the radius that they've got on their kind of like pre-bent or curved foils. Right let's talk about American Magic and this is the foil that's been around for a little while it was launched just before I took my break but I didn't get around to talking about it. One of the main reasons was it came with a beautiful chrome finish, which was very hard to see like, any details in. But there has been some interesting developments on this foil. Just looking at the, the front on and below kind of profile shots, we can see that this is a similar sort of design philosophy to the one design foil, except it's probably a lower area, higher aspect ratio foil. Um, it's got the full tips on as well and obviously that chrome finish is looking spectacular. They followed it up just this week and this is the first of the kind of brand new this week foils with this slightly curved iteration. We can see if anything it's a slightly lower again area to their first foil and we've got this constant curve and quite similar tips but constant curve throughout the foil but that's possibly not the most interesting thing which has been kind of changing around with these foil iterations this is how their first foil wing one launched um, again beautiful chrome finish very hard to pick up any details about the flap but a couple of things to note first of all is the hip of the foil up here is pretty pretty similar to the one design side um, and if we look at the overlap between the foil wing, the kind of lifting surface and and the vertical, the end of the arm, basically intersection area, there's a bit of an overlap between the two um, separate foil sections. And this is just it compared, first of all, to the one design foil. Again, it's pretty similar in a lot of ways, but we can start to see some of the things they're playing around with. Um, you've got this, and I'm going to call it a spat, and this was one of the really interesting points of the last cup, and if you've not watched it, I did a whole video on how when Tiwahutai launched, they were still hiding the mechanics which are within this spat. Obviously, American Magic doing some sort of testing with it, whether that's um, just a moulding for a shape that they might house a mechanics in in the future, whether it's additional weight and I'll kind of cover why that might be a possibility um, a bit later in the video um, or whether it does actually house um, mechanics now but they put this on and then they played around with a different shape adding on at the top um, with this and now this is the access hatch for for the mechanics um, I think that's where the actuator is that operates a push rod for a single um, a single flap on the one design um, on the one design AC40. So this is below that and it could be either extra space so that you can get two sets of actuators for flaps either side of the center line or, 
again it could be weight and I'll cover that later in the video but again this is a nice shot because it shows the overlap between the vertical and the horizontal. Let's have a look at this new foil that they've launched from a different perspective. Uh, they've gone for a brushed steel um, finish um, which is new. I think this one to me has a slightly more rounded nose to it. Um, looks like a fair junction as if this has been machined in two parts, kind of the horizontal wing and and the bull and then joined and fared in. Um, polished steel flap again it kind of looks like a single single flap um, but you can see those additional kind of spats have gone. You could probably just about make out the mark from where it was. Um, that's gone, so probably not housing mechanics. It's not required for the mechanics, and so maybe it was just holding weight. Maybe it was just a, a mock-up of a design they might have in their fairing. But the big difference for me between these two foils is the offset between the vertical, between the arm and the, and the horizontal. So on the old foil, there was a clear overlap by a good few inches between the two, whereas on this new one, there's zero overlap between the two. They're completely separated out. And what this does is separates out the, the pressure increase as the water parts and moves around the, the kind of arm aerofoil section versus the high pressure ridge where it separates out and goes around the wing. And the more you can separate those two high pressure zones out, the less they interfere with one another. Now, you can't just move your wing backwards in the boat because that changes where the lift is compared to the mass of the boat and that would change your balance. So we can see actually in the arm, um, the first foil wing had the arm section cut in and then effectively the uh, vertical position further back relative to the arm. Whereas on this new one, you can see the cutting is in it, is at the aft side. So the arm section is, or join is further forward relative to the stock. Clear different from one side to the other. So looking at ways of moving, reducing the area of this arm and moving it forward away from the main lifting surface. Luna Rossa, and these were the first LEQ12 foils we saw in the America's Cup and this one, full wing one, is still on their boat. It was launched on the end of October, and I think it's the most revised foil um, of the whole cut process. They're on revision, revision K now of this foil. Lots of changes to the foil tips, cameras mounted, removed, blah, blah, blah. Um, but pretty straight up T foil in line with the design philosophy we saw in the last cup come out of Emirates T New Zealand. Their second foil was the Y foil, and that was kind of a blend of what MHT New Zealand were doing in the last cup with the Y foils that we saw on um, America Magic, Luna Rossa, and Ineos. This foil has now been re removed, and it's been replaced with a kind of bendy T foil. I'm going to call it a T foil. I think it's mostly T. You can see there's a bit of a curve. They've moved away from the kind of harsher tips and just a general upsweep towards the end. And when we look at the detailing on these foils, just launched um, at the start of April, when we look at the detailing on these foils, you can see they've not got the kind of blended tips around here, but they've got the, um, the flap kind of hitting an end plate. Um, quite a nice dip section in the middle, a few teams doing this behind, behind the bulb, just dipping that down. Camera mounted here, a few trip strips on the leg. Um, also I think a lower area than their previous foils and more of a pointed um, bulb. We've got the two in the same shot now. So this is their first T foil, foil one, and this is foil three. You can see for three the kind of more pointed um, bulb compared to the rounded bulb on their first one. The revisions on their first wing, to point a few of them out for you, well, there's the cameras that he added on. There's this gate um, towards the tip, um, the kind of outboard tip. There's also how they treated their, their foil tips. This one on the starboard side, the outboard side of the starboard before it has the blended tip. You can see this um, kind of 
join going round into the tip and then a little end, end plate on the very tip. Whereas on the inboard end in the water, a um, bit blurry in here as it's gone out of focus, but you can see the end plate is here and the flap goes up to an end plate. And there isn't any kind of transition area around the tip. So that's just for some of the changes they made to this much revised foil. They're coming thick and fast. Let's move on. What have the other teams done? Well, this is Ineos and this is their T4 that they launched identical um, versions of on port and starboard. Had the P-top tube, loads of cameras, but a pretty large surface area to it with this elliptical shape. Um, Ineos stressed that these weren't foils to go as fast as possible. They were about collecting data. And in some ways, it makes sense to do, launch identical foils on both sides if you want to collect the purest data, because then you can cross correlate from either side of the boat without having to worry about or with being able to extract some of the kind of leeway um, and current offsets, which might have otherwise interfere with comparisons of A-B testing on either side of the boat. Really interesting Y-foil, a mysterious foil from the last cup which they brought it out but then never raced with. Um, they launched this at the end of March, did a whole video on that and kind of all the special features of it. But already this foil has been removed from the boat and it's been replaced with this. A sort of banana foil. I think this has got a greater amount of curve than what we see on American Magic or um, certainly than what we see on Luna Rossa, but not quite as extreme as what we see on Emirates Team New Zealand. A much lower area foil compared to Ineos's previous iterations. Um, these marks on the bottom to each side, I'm not sure if these are internal actuators or hinges. Kind of think they're hinges, and the reason I think that is because I believe they've moved their actuation system up onto the foil arm. So we see a few strange things about this foil. First of all, ignore all these, these are just cameras, and I'm sure they'll come off. Interesting things to note first of all, is how far back the foil is relative to the vertical, and there's very little bulb in front of the vertical surface, which I think pretty much all teams were kind of pushing out the tip of their bulb in front of that. And this bulb is actually very small compared to what the other teams are using, which may also point to something else. But there's not much evidence of this flap being split into two, which again is another reason why I think they could be moving the mechanics up. And if we move on one shot, we see the addition of this huge spat. And this is something that I was showing you on American Magic. And it's something that we've seen on Emirates Team New Zealand, a bit of a mystery from the last cup. I think this shot's nice because you can see clearly the cameras in these pods. Again, no sign, no sign of a division between the flaps either side, which means it could be just, you know, complete opposite there. W4 it could be a single actuated flap with the actuation system mechanics housed up in a flap and a push rod coming down to actually move that. The other thing that could be housed up in this spat is weight. And we see there the bulb has reduced in size a lot. Now, why would you move weight up here away from the point? Well, you lose a little bit of leverage, but you also remove mass and bulk and area volume from being immersed in the water and no matter which way you you know you shape it extra volume is has to be taken up as either extra frontal area or um, extra foil area surface area which will be drag look at the way the weights break down you can see the total weight for the foils um, is broken down obviously got a little bit of five kilogram tolerance but 1270 kgs but it's broken down into two areas first of all the far foil arm stock which is a one design part which is going to weigh 464 kilos but then the rest of the weight you have an option to either put it in the foil arm fairing which is exactly where we see these spat spats or you can put it in the wing so down in a bulb or in the wing itself or in the flap, which is at the back of the wing, or 
contained in the systems. So there's very much a trade-off of, you know, do you put that weight down in the bulb or in the wing, which is the furthest away from the the boat to give you the maximum writing movement when the foil's lifted up on the windward side out of the water? Or do you put that mass in the foil arm fairing, which doesn't give you quite the same writing moment because it's closer to the centre of the boat, it's closer to your, your area of lift, which will be your lured wing, but it does mean that that volume isn't being submersed in the water and you can potentially reduce the size of your of your foils and your bulb as a result. So that's what I believe these huge spats are there for. And these certainly weren't there. This is the T-foil. Um, again, there was a small spat there, but nowhere near as big as this thing. Um, and this is the W-foil again, a small spat, nowhere near as big as what we're seeing here. So I think it is marking a, a change in philosophy of removing mass and removing actuation systems from below the waterline to the foil arm fairing. And then finally, if that wasn't enough, we have the foil which was just um, revealed yesterday, this thing from Alinghi Red Bull Racing. I've been a bit frustrated with Alinghi, they've you know, had their AC40 for quite a long time and we've not seen them launch any LEQ12 parts on it, but now they have it's really interesting. So the inboard um, wing is pretty vanilla, um, but the outboard wing has these um, tubercles on. Not sure how to pronounce that. Shall I look it up? Tubercles or tubercles. 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 Starting out larger and then becoming smaller towards the outboard end of the foil. Um, not much in the way of foil tips. Um, here's a closer look. You can see the inboard side of this foil, um, just a straight leading edge, whereas the outboard side, you can see the waves. Not much actual bulb in front of the, the wing, but um, yeah, interesting, really interesting foil from them. You know, let me know. Obviously, you're kind of a, a borrowed from nature thing. You often see it mentioned quite a lot in... Um, marketing bump about um, certain aerodynamic and hydrodynamic uh, benefits of these and lots of people say they would be more present in engineering if it wasn't so hard to manufacture compared to a straight edge other people just say it's kind of marketing bump not not a lot known about them but if if you've got any good information on these and the utility of them in kind of high performance um, hydrodynamic or aerodynamic applications, then get involved in the comments and let me know. I'm certainly gonna have to do some reading on it to catch up. So that is that. Hopefully that has brought us all up to date with foils. I think what I'm most surprised about is actually how divergent the teams are. If anyone was worried that they'd all converge on a similar philosophy, and they'd all be launching the same stuff with minute differences which you couldn't really see. Well, hopefully this video has proved that we can see differences, we can see very significant differences. Thanks for watching, um, more videos coming out in the next few weeks, and uh, yeah, catch you around. <laughs>